All right, Jeremy Miner here, founder of Seventh Level. All right, so if you are brand new to our Facebook group, we're using StreamYard right now. Uh, we're using StreamYard, so we're going live here on four different platforms. I couldn't log into LinkedIn today. They said I need to. I needed to like a, uh, send in my driver's license to identify myself. I have no idea why, but there you go. I guess it takes a couple of days to re-identify myself so we can go live on LinkedIn. So we're going live here on StreamYard. Uh, in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution, about 82,000 of you guys in there running around. We're also going live here in our Facebook business page, about 150,000 of you running around in there. We're going live on YouTube as well and my personal Facebook. Now, every Wednesday, we interview a client. I typically, I love business owners and company clients, but I typically interview salespeople like you. I love to keep it real because I know that you're going to learn the most to sell more from people who are in the trenches like you. Type in me if I'm right by that. Would you rather me interview salespeople and what they're asking, what they're doing to close more deals or some random business owner that's going to go on and on and how awesome they are, even though they're awesome, what's going to help you sell more. Okay. So that's why, I interview a salesperson from a different industry every single week and we break down their sales process that we've taught them. These are clients of ours. Now, the rule of our ball game for you to even be interviewed, because we only do 50, 50 of these a year, because I usually don't do these two weeks because I'm, you know, traveling or something, Christmas break or whatever, or something like that. So I always try to do them even when I'm traveling or I have somebody on my team do them. So every, we're going to hear, we hear 50 different industries every single year for the last two and a half years. Okay. So this week we're going to interview a gentleman and for you to be interviewed on here, you have to be making a minimum of 35,000 a month in commissions. That's about 400,000 a year to even be on here. Okay. So we only want you to learn from our clients who are crushing it. All right. So you can take away stuff from that. Now we're going to interview a gentleman here that was already doing well before he got into our advanced inner circle training, he was making around $10,000 a month. But now guess what he makes? A little bit over 40,000 a month in commissions a year later. Now, type in me, type in me, if you would like to acquire the sales ability to make $40,000 a month in commissions with what you sell right now, type in me. If you want to acquire that type of sales ability to get to that level, type in me in the comment section, because you're going to work the hours you're working now anyways. Am I right? So if you're already going to work the hours you're working right now, would it make more sense to acquire more advanced skills so you make four times more? Just going out on a limb there because you're already going to work the hours. All right. Now, I'm going to bring this gentleman up here in a second, and I'm going to interview him. And here's the cool thing. On the Wednesday Lives, I let you ask him questions. So you are going to ask him questions. There will probably be 30 or 40 questions. I'm going to take the best four or five, six questions to answer. Now, here's the rule of the ball game. Okay? Don't ask me vague questions because I, I don't know how to answer a vague question because I can't clarify and ask you what you mean by that here because we're not talking face to face. So say I sell this or I'm in this industry and my question is or I sell this, I call outbound leads or I'm in this industry and I do inbound leads or I'm in this industry and I cold call because that also tells me something because it's different. I would answer differently if you do inbound leads compared to outbound leads compared to cold calling. OK, so. Uh, what is this and what are you selling? Somebody from the Facebook user? Yes, we'll bring him up and we'll answer that question in a second. All right. So you guys start asking him questions and I'm going to pick the best four or five to ask him. And then we're going to break down a sales process. Now, if you're brand new to our Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro, or you just sort of follow me on YouTube or sort of follow me in the Facebook business page. My name is Jeremy Miner. I'm the founder of Seventh Level. Now, Seventh Level is a sales training organization, if you don't know. Now, we train salespeople just like you watching me in this Hugo Boss shirt. So we train salespeople like you, sales professionals like you, sales executives like you, sales management like you, sales leadership like you, entrepreneurs like you, coaches, business owners, consultants like you, contractors like you. And we train you and your teams how to use specific skilled questions and techniques 
that work with human behavior rather than work against it. What do I mean when I say that? That's what we're going to cover today. This client's going to tell you himself. Okay. That's called NEPQ. It stands for neural emotional persuasion questions. Now we have to teach you the right tones, not just the questions, but it's how you ask the questions because your tone is how your prospect interprets your intention behind the question. Let me repeat that. Write that down. You might want to write that down. Your tone is how your prospect interprets the intention behind your question. Why are they asking me that question? Okay. Are they asking me to box me in to sell me something or are they asking in a curious tone? Uh, John, walk me through. What do you guys use for X, Y, Z? Just so I understand. There's other questions that require more of a challenging or skeptical tone. What happens if you don't do anything about this challenging tone? Okay. What if you don't do anything about this and it gets worse? Skeptical tone. There's other questions that require more of a concern tone, a tone that shows more empathy. What's, what's really holding you back from moving forward? See, that's a concern tone. Your tone is how they interpret why you're asking. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about that. Now, if you're on the live right now, here's what I'm going to have you do. And I'm going to pull this gentleman out. If you're on the live right now, because I know you're on your phone, go down to your phone. And in the comment sections, I want you to post hashtag live. So if you're on the live right now, post hashtag live. Now between YouTube and uh, the Facebook group, there's over a hundred of you on here between both of those platforms. So go over on here and I want you to post hashtag live if you're on the live. So I better see at least a hundred some hashtag lives. And if you're on the replay, I want you to post hashtag replay. I better see a hundred hashtag lives because, you know, me and this guy, we don't have to do this for you. We you know, it's only 109 degrees here today in Scottsdale, Arizona. I can just go right across from our offices and golf right over here in the golf course. 109 degrees is not that bad. I can last probably an hour or so. So hashtag live. If you're on the replay, hashtag replay. Now, I want each of you to smash the heart button too. I don't even want you to smash the like button. I want you to smash the heart button. So smash the heart button several times. I better see hundreds of smashed hearts, hundreds of smashed hearts. You can even smash the like button if you want to. I'll let you smash the heart, smash the heart button, smash the like button. I better see hundreds of smash hearts and hundreds of smash likes. Okay. Just got off a sales call. NPQ is the most respectful form of communication I ever learned. Yeah, respectful uh, because it helps them build a gap from where they are to where they want to be and get the result they want. Perfect. All right. So let's bring this gentleman out here. Keith, how are you, my friend? You're muted. There you go. Perfect. How are you, Keith? I'm, I'm doing well, Jeremy. How are you? You're doing well. Keith, where do you live, brother? I'm in, I'm in New Jersey. Ah, uh, you're in New Jersey. Yeah, it's love it out there. I love the East Coast. Okay. It's nice and nice and beautiful in the summers, that humidity, you know, got good golf courses out there. Yeah. Really cold in the winters, but I love it. All right. Keith, what industry do you sell in? I am in the life insurance industry. Okay. So you sell life insurance. Is that just like general life, mortgage protection, final expense, or what do you do? All of it. Oh, you, okay. So general life insurance to families, um, mortgage, uh, protection. mortgage protection, insurance, final mm -hmm. expense, anything. Okay. And how long have you been in that industry for? Since 2016. So about seven years. So, okay. So seven years. And what caused you to go there? Caused me to come to the industry. Yeah. 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 Um, the money <laughs> it sells, right? <laughs> okay. So you, you, somebody said, Hey, you can make a lot of money here. That's how they say every industry, right? Mm -hmm. So you probably quickly found out that you don't really make a lot of money unless you yeah. learn the right skills, sure. right? Okay. So you started off and from what I understand, you, you did pretty well. How long did it take you before you got to up to 10 grand a month in commissions? So I started in the field selling face to face. Yeah. And I was doing really well. Okay. And then, uh, we all know what happened in 2020. Yeah. Uh, and then having to go virtual is what? Yeah. had to make the transition to sell over the phone. So okay. that's when my income took a hit, trying to learn how to do that. Okay. So you got up to about 10 grand a month in commissions. Now that's 120 grand a year. And a lot of people will be like, man, that's a lot of money. 120,000 a year, 10 grand a month. I know everything there is to know about selling. I could never learn anything else. I am the God of sales. Yeah. But Keith, in your mind, what caused you to be like, you know, 10 grand's good, but Man, I, I, I feel like 
I could make a lot more money, which really means I feel like I could help a lot more people. Yeah. Right. And when you help more people with your products or services, solve their problems and get what they want, you get paid a lot of money, which you should. Mm -hmm. What went through your mind that caused you to feel like, man, there's just things I'm missing that I really need to acquire like advanced sales ability to make more money. What went through your mind? It was actually a, a challenge that you had. And okay. you talked about what was your biggest expense. And it was the um, it was the missed sales, the missed opportunities that I had. And I looked at how much commissions I was missing by the not, you know, closing the sales that I that I was supposed to have closed. Yeah. Yeah. That's an exercise we always do is, you know, what's your biggest expense in life? And a lot of people say mortgage payment, kids, cars. Mm -hmm. No, those are taxes, those are expenses, but really your biggest expense in life, everybody write this down, is your what? It's your lack of knowledge of having the right skills, sales skills, to be able to make at least two hundred and fifty to 350000 every year. If you're already making that, it's your lack of knowledge to make five or 600000 a year. If you're already making that as a salesperson, Lack of knowledge to make a million plus a year, right? Okay, so everybody has to ask ourselves, do we want to keep paying life tens of thousands or hundred thousands of dollars a year because we're still not willing to acquire the skills necessary to make that? It's just simply a choice, right? Okay, so you're like, hey man, lack of knowledge. So you heard me on some type of virtual event, something like that. That means mm -hmm. you probably got into like our NEPQ 2.0 training program, which is like the, the begin level that we have uh, some people start at or 3.0. Mm -hmm. So you got into 2.0 and, and what started to shift for you before you got into more advanced training? I was asking better questions. Uh -huh. um, just getting the prospects to open up just a little bit more than what I was already doing. I wasn't, you know what? I, I wasn't assuming the sell as much, so I was getting a lot less friction on the calls. Okay, so you got less resistance. You were learning. So in 2.0, we, we train a lot, especially in the new portal. You're probably not aware of this, Keith. But in the new portal, I just redid the first 14 hours of the 43-hour portal. So the first 14 hours, I just redid, redid for our clients. And so I worked a lot more on your tone and getting the prospects to lower the guard, even than I the first version that you went through, which everybody said was awesome. But this is like three levels above that. Okay. So we always acquire skills as we go. So then you're like, you, you started making more money. Okay. But what caused you to be like, you know what, I need to get into advanced inner circle where Jeremy is training me in those small groups. I need to learn the nuances of my industry because that's more industry specific. What caused you to want to get in there? Uh, not being able to bridge it all together, the entire sales structure. Yeah. Needing, needing help. No one I needed help within those, those small, those yeah, because it's one thing just to go through video trainings, but you mm -hmm. can't really ask me questions like I didn't understand why you did this. And why did you do that? And what caused you to ask this question? And why did you lower your tone there? Right. Because if I trained everything to you guys in the virtual training platform for our 2.0 members, everything that you're going to have to know to make a bunch of money, that thing would be 50,000 hours long. OK. I can't train all the ins and outs and tweaks and all that stuff for the different industries in one virtual training platform. That's why I have group training with myself and our sales trainers with you guys. Okay. So you got in a little bit over a year ago. Okay. What started shifting for you quickly? Wow. Um, calls got longer. People got more emotional because life insurance is definitely an emotional sale. Mm -hmm. uh, and they opened up a lot more. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I was not getting, I wasn't arguing. By the end of the day, I wasn't tired from being in a boxing match all day i know right our clients always say your industry in every industry even if they're already making six figures you're like man i just feel like i'm getting beat up i'm punching back i'm in a bocce max i have all this anxiety every night i'm frustrated i i take it out on my family sometimes and i dread going back to work on monday when it's you know friday or saturday mm -hmm. uh, but when you acquire skills you don't really care right because it's easy it makes it easy see everybody on here Unfortunately, and it's not your fault that you were trained this way, but it is your what? It is your problem, right? Because all of you on here watching me in this shirt, like I said, it's not your fault, but it is your problem, have been trained that you have to do all the work. You have to do all the convincing, all the persuading, all the selling, 
all the pushing, all the pressuring, all overcoming their own objections, which has gotten you to where you're at with your income. And that's it. Hard to make any more than that. See, what we train you as a client in our group training and all that stuff that Keith is in is how to get the prospect to do all the work. Now, why would we want to learn skills to get the prospect to do all the work? Who has the problems, you or the prospect? The prospect. See, Keith, when they fill out a form about quotes or whatever, who has the problem, you or the prospect? They do. They do. Who has the solution to solve those problems? We do. We do. You guys do. So why are you guys doing all the work? They should be doing all the work because they're the ones that have the problems. Your solution solves it. I'm talking to everybody on here. Okay. So we're going to train you to get them to do the work, to get them to sell themselves, to get them to convince themselves, to get them to overcome their own objections and to get them to pull you in. Now, once you started acquiring those skills, your income, I believe, went from, don't quote me, from 10 grand a month to over 40,000 a month, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Now, is $40,000 a month, because you're making around 500,000 a year, is 500,000 a year better than 110 to 120,000 a year? Of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is it easier to live with inflation when you make 500,000 a year? Definitely. Just possibly. Especially where you live on the East Coast, man. It's not cheap living in New Jersey, right? Okay. All right. Now, we're going to go through this. We're going to give them some meat here because that's why they're on here. They, they want to learn how to sell more. Every Type in me in the comment section. So if you're on YouTube, if you're in the Facebook group Sales Revolution, the Facebook business page, if you're on my Facebook, type in me. If you want me and Keith to give you some golden nuggets on questions to ask and what to do to sell more in your industry, type in me if you want us to do that for you. Type in me. Oh, we got a few. Dave and McKay, all right. Facebook. Okay, they're all coming in now. All right, perfect. All right. So, Keith, let's give them an example. Then I'm going to have, I'm going to answer some questions here along with you. Um, let's start with the connection phase. Okay, connection questions. Maybe give us an example of a connection question that we taught you in the advanced inner circle and you know and why you ask it and how how what the prospect how they react to that let's talk about there first yeah so why i ask it is to understand you know what it was that they saw that uh spoke to their problem um and why they decided to fill out their information and how they act is based on the tonality of the question what specific uh, questions? Just give an example. Like in your industry, there's typically about four connection questions we train to ask, but just give us one of those. So, Jeremy, when you see the ad online, uh, what was it that you saw that sort of attracted your attention? And why would you ask that? To know exactly what they saw that emotionally spoke to them to say, yeah. hey, I feel like this might be able to help me out. Yeah. And um, and I know you're kind of in role play mode, but we'd even we'd even. Uh, verbal pace out even more. So, hey, when you, everybody listen to me real quick. So when you like went through the ad where you saw X, Y, Z, I guess what, I don't know, like what was it about the ad that maybe caused you to want to wanna look into this more? See, I verbal pace that out, everybody. Why would I verbal pace that out? Because when I pace that out and I have a verbal pause there, that causes your prospect to do what? Think deeper about the question I'm asking, which causes them to go below the surface. Does that make mm -hmm. sense to everybody what we did? Okay. Now, um, so now there's there's more connection questions you have to learn for your industry. We teach all that because we have all the scripts for literally every industry on the planet now, especially your industry as well. Uh, there's more that you have to ask in the connection phase, but let's go to like situation questions. What's what's a good situation question? you ask and why do you ask it because there's several you need to ask for life insurance but what's just give us one example so just so i understand what types of uh life insurance policies or coverage do you have now if any that that would help you protect your family if God so what so walk me through like what what do you what do you have in place now uh so like when that when you do pass away your family's financially protected i would even relanguage it to that Okay, so walk me through, like, what do you specifically have in place now um, when you do pass away that, that will protect your family? Now, why would I say, because in your industry, a lot of people say, 
what do you have in place now if you passed away? But the what the <laughs> hell are we saying if? There is no if with yeah. death. Mm -hmm. There's just when. There's we, everybody's going to pass away. It's part of life. It's you know part of the purpose of life, right? God put us here. Okay, so everybody's going to pass away. It's not if. It's just when. Mm -hmm. So I'm not being assumptive here. I'm not being mean. I'm being realistic. All of us are not going to be here one day. Okay, yeah. we're going to be. We're going to go in the next life, whatever that looks like. All right, we'll all celebrate that. Okay, so so walk me through. Like, what do you have in place now? to protect, you know, to financially protect your family when you do pass away. Oh, I, you know, they could say I have a policy or I have savings or I have nothing or I have a 401k or they might say I have a work policy, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if they say I have a work policy, I then want to prevent what type of objection that I might get at the end. And I did. Uh, oh, I just, work, I'll just use my work policy to pay mm -hmm. off. Okay. So what you'd want to do in that industry, this is an example of an objection prevention technique. Okay, so you have a work policy. And how much is your work policy for? Oh, 150000 Now, are you, what are you wanting to do with that? Like, are you, are you trying to like financially to protect the work policy so your, you know, your, your spouse can have that so she doesn't have to go out and get a second job and retire on time? Or, or what are you wanting to do with that work policy? See, I'm positioning it. Like, do you want to financially protect the work policy? So that you're, you know, because I've already by this point found out that they have a spouse. Let's say her name is Cindy. Let's say she's a school teacher because she wants to spend time with the kids in the summer. So she only wants to work nine months out of the year. Okay, so you got this policy for $100,000. Are you wanting to like financially protect that policy to have for Cindy when you do pass? So she can use that for her retirement so she doesn't have to get a second job when she's older? Or what are you wanting to do with that? It's really hard for, let's say if it's a guy, for him to say, nope, I don't want to financially pr protect that so she can get a second job when she's older. Like He'll be like, yeah, yeah, I want to financially protect that. Now, I know I'm not going to get what objection at the end. Oh, I have this work policy. I have this work policy. See, that's, an, an, a, 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 that's what we teach you in the advanced inner circle, those type of techniques, everybody, for every industry. Okay, that's objection prevention. That's how you get in the top. That's how you learn how to make 40 grand a month plus in any industry is those type of techniques that you would never learn anywhere else but that program. OK, now give us there's other questions you have to ask in a situation. And actually, let's open it up where we answer one of these questions here. Let's see. Um, OK, let me look for one. Now, I want you guys to ask questions here. OK, Travis, uh, if there. OK, somebody on the Facebook asked and I can't I can't see that because I'm on streamer. Let me see if I can see it here in the Facebook group. Hold on. Okay, here it is. Ah, here we go. Okay, from Vanessa. This is a good question. Travis, if if they're there, they have a need. It may be an emotional need, but urgency depends on how much emotion tie you are able to get depending on the skills and questions and tone you ask. Yeah. Okay. So you're just saying that, Vanessa. Yeah. hundred percent. Right. Every, every sales. So here's what I, I hear from salespeople sometimes like, Oh, you don't understand our industry. Like there's no problems. Like, you know, there's no emotion in it. Like my prospects, like they just, they, you know, they're all logical thinkers. Okay. I love all of you, but do you understand how the brain works? Anybody understand? Does any, is anybody a behavioral science or social dynamic uh, expert on here? Oh, okay. None of you are, right? Okay. So let me give you an example because I am. Okay. I this I only, you know, here's my motto. I don't know everything about anything, but I know one thing. I know everything about one thing. Let me repeat that. I know everything about one thing, but I don't know everything about anything. I know everything there is. No. Well, close on the way the brain works in human psychology with sales and persuasion. This is the one thing I know. You ask me other questions, I'll just say I have no idea. You're probably way smarter than me on this. Did you, are you aware that the human brain cannot make a decision to go pee, drink water, tie shoes, say hello, or do anything if their emotional side of their brain is damaged? Everybody know that? Let's say you're in the military and a grenade goes off, okay, and your emotional side of your brain gets damaged. Did you know you will be in 
that hospital bed for the rest of your life. Because if your emotional uh, side of your brain is, is brain damage, you literally cannot make a decision to go pee. Did everybody know that? Human beings start their decision-making based on their emotions. That's where the brain starts the decision-making process. Okay. I just want to make sure everybody understands that. I sold to Fortune 50 and Fortune 100 and Fortune 500 CEOs in one of the four industries I sold in. I made $3 million a year. You don't think that those CEOs are emotional about their companies? Okay. Everybody makes decisions based on emotion than justified logic. That's just the way our human brains work. Okay. So, uh, so yes. Yeah, so you're exactly right, Vanessa. It's about building the gap from where they are compared to where they want to be. Now, the only way you can build a gap is by what? Not by telling them their problems, because that's going to go in one ear out the other, right? You're biased. You're the salesperson. They know that. But by asking the right questions at the right time with the right tone that causes them to emotionally open up and go below the surface and tell you the real problems the root cause of those problems, like what's causing the problem and how it's affecting them even personally. B to B, B to G, and B to C does not matter. Okay, let's give an example here. So um, no, but I read a lot about neuroscience. Hey, Mike, awesome. You are a smart guy. I love that. Okay, here's uh, Mike S. What would be a good situation question for selling professional IT services? Okay, what type of professional IT services? Mike, you got to be more specific, Okay. What does your IT services solve? What problems? Okay, we train a lot of people in IT as well. Big industry we train as well is cybersecurity too. So we train a lot of people in your space. But I need to know more, more details. You got to be more specific. Good question. Be more specific. Okay, let's go back over here to Keith. Keith, give us an example of a problem awareness question that you ask because there's several in yes. your space that you have to ask. But just maybe give us an example of one and why you ask it. It helps them to start to see they have a problem that they didn't know they had, right? So so walk me walk me back here. Let's say who would be, I guess, the person responsible for going in, meeting with the funeral director, picking out the casket, planning the embalming? Who would be who would who would be responsible for paying for all of that? For paying for all of those expenses. It kind of gets busy in their mind. That's a really good one. And another good one that you haven't learned yet, because you graduated from IC about nine, 10 months ago. Yeah. So this is another one we've had. We always add to every industry all the time. We tweak everything till it's perfected at the seventh level, seven level of perfection. So so help me understand. I mean, you've got you've got this policy of one hundred and fifty thousand already through State Farm. I mean, what what's caused you to feel like that's not enough? Why would I ask that question? To, to build a gap. Well, it's not enough because, and they start to tell me and who tell themselves. themselves why it's not enough. Now, that's only if they have a policy or a 401k or a work. See, I could do that thing. I mean, you. so you got this 401k. I mean, what's caused you to feel like it's not enough? You've got this work policy with, I mean, with your company. I mean, they're they're a fairly decent company. What's caused you to feel like the work policy's not enough, though? See, they have to tell me the answer to that question because they're the ones that filled out the form looking for life insurance, right? Mm -hmm. now, I wouldn't ask that question if I'm cold calling a homeowner. It wouldn't make any sense. Does that make sense to everybody? Well, I mean, it's a lot, but the reason why I feel like it's not enough and that we need more is, and they start to expand. And then we're going to clarify and probe off that. Okay. Now, another thing that you want to learn, you probably haven't learned this yet, Keith, because I don't think I taught this type of an identity frame for your industry back when you're in IC that we're training now. So I, I know you're, you're getting back in IC here in a couple of weeks. So you'll learn that in there and you'll have the new scripts for that. So this is identity frame. So they're like, oh, well, I feel like I, it's not enough because of X and Y and Z. So this is an identity frame for your industry. We change this for every industry. Yeah, we, we do see that a lot. I mean, they're, they're lucky to have somebody like you that, you know, wants to take that burden off of their shoulders so they don't have to worry about it. You know, I talk to a lot of people, you know, and some people, they just, they don't mind leaving that burden on their kids. You know what I mean? 
And you know what they say? Oh, I would never do that for my kids. I would never have the kids responsible to pay for my funeral. And that just solidifies their belief, their identity frame, that they're not going to leave the burden to those they leave behind. Now, depending on if it, they said their kids were going to have to pay for it, their spouse is going to pay for it, their friends are going to pay for it. That's how you tailor that identi identity frame to them. And so that causes them to tell you why they would never leave that burden on those other people. So that eliminates what objection? Oh, I'll just have my daughter pay for it. She does really well. She's a doctor. Mm -hmm. My doctor will pay for my, for, you know, uh, her mom's house when I pass away. See, when you say that, it's a way to that he, he or she just doesn't even say that anymore because they're, they just literally said, I would never leave that burden on my kids. Because mm -hmm. the big objection you get in your industry is what? My kids will pay for it. Oh, my kids will pay for it. My son's a, a doctor. My, my, you know, my, uh, my little girl, she's a, a successful actress now, or she's got her own business or whatever. But when they do the identity frame and they tell you why they'd never leave that bird on them, that objection will never happen. And see, that's objection prevention. Is everybody starting to learn what I'm talking about? We train that for every industry in our clients portals. We don't teach that really here on lives. It's, you know, we teach them. Okay. Uh, so, Mike, yes. Yeah, so, cybersecurity. So, let's say, you know, maybe I'll be really nice here, Mike, for you and pull up uh, a sales structure from this company. We grew them by like 800% this last year. And I'm going to pull it up from an individual salesperson that sells cybersecurity, mainly to banks. Uh, Bank of America. I think Wells Fargo is one of his clients now. Let me see here. What's a good situation question for cybersecurity? Oh, you're, I'm just being nice to you here, over here, Mr. YouTube guy. Uh, what did I put? I'm looking here. I'm looking here. Hold on. So situation questions in any industry, we're finding out what their real situation is because most prospects don't really understand what their real situation is when you first start talking to them. Okay. So I might say, um, hey, now just so I, this is after connection questions. I think it's Mike on YouTube. Hey, can you tell me more about your onboarding process and how you're catching fraud. See how I verbal pace that out. Can you tell me a little bit more about your onboarding process and how you're catching fraud? So I have more background or I might say, can I ask who you're using presently? If that, if that's okay. Or I might say, who do you, who do you use presently for like identi uh, identity, identity, um, what is it? Identity authentication when new customers enroll with you guys. That's another situation question you'd ask for your industry. And, and a little bit more about how do you flag fraud at enrollment? What does that process look like? Okay. So there's more situation questions you ask. We teach all of this in our advanced inner circle. That is industry specific training. You will never learn industry specific training outside of that program. William, what about real estate? We teach all of that in our virtual training platforms for our client, William. We train thousands of real estate agents that now make seven figures a year. Mike, you ever heard of Ryan Serhant? Million Dollar List in New York, the star of Million Dollar List in New York. Guess who trains them? Oh, seventh level. Yes, we've they've been one of our clients for about two and a half years. Okay. All right. Mike, you're welcome. Mike, if you want to know more details about our, our virtual training programs and group training for clients, we train thousands in your space. Like that guy's script that I just showed you there in the situation questions. He was making about 90,000 a year before the training. He now makes a little bit over 750,000 a year. So Mike, if you want to learn how to make 750,000 a year in your space, uh, just join the Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro, William, you too. And uh, just message me and, and we'll have somebody message you some details. You can even talk with one of our uh, account managers and, and tell them kind of maybe some issues you're having, like what objection you might be losing sales from. And then they'll show you which program we would put you in for what you do. OK. All right. Perfect. All right, Keith, let's get back or we're going to be on here for three hours. OK, what's there's more problem awareness questions you got to ask for that your industry for sure. But uh, maybe walk me through a solution, a solution awareness question, question you ask and why. Uh, so before today, were you were you out there looking for like more financial protection to have in place for your family for, for when you do pass away or what were you doing about this? Yeah. And why would we ask it that way? Like, what's what? Why would we ask? Like, why would we want to find out what they've done in the past on the first part of solution awareness question? Why? To, to see if they've done anything. And if not, why not? 
Um, hey, so before today, were, you know, what, were you out there looking for like, you know, more coverage, like to, to make sure that Cindy and the kids were, you know, a hundred percent financially protected when you pass away or, or what were you doing to make sure they were hundred percent, all those expenses were paid off when you pass. Now they could say, well, I looked at this or I looked at that or like, I haven't done anything. Now, if they say, well, I haven't really done anything, what would you ask? Well, what, what's, what's prevented you? Oh, well, what, what's prevented you? See, like Keith did. Oh, well, see, now why would we ask that question, Keith? Why would we ask him, well, what's held you back from getting more coverage? And why would we ask that in a skeptical, challenging tone there? Uh, to make them defend um, why they haven't been doing anything about it and loud yeah, enough, they've been putting it off. Yeah, so it helps them internalize that they've been procrastinating, putting it off. Mm -hmm. And see, that that is a technique to get them to start internalizing. I can't believe I've been putting this off. I should probably do something about this. Mm -hmm. So that's another way to help prevent what objection at the end. I want to keep looking around. I need to do more research. I need to think it over. See, what we train you in our virtual training platforms for our clients are techniques like this. And that's why you go from whatever you're making now to 30, 40 grand a month or more in your industry. Every industry. You know what the average person in life insurance makes on a yearly basis, Keith? I looked it up. The average salesperson in your industry, guess how much they make per month? How much? $3,212. That's the average. Wow. How are you making 40,000 plus a month? And you're still learning. Wow. We have clients in your space now that make over a hundred grand a month. Okay. Yeah. See, Keith, you'll eventually be there. You keep getting back in the another year, or you'll probably double that. Okay. All right. That's good. Congratulations. All right. Now, consequence. There's other solution awareness questions you got to ask, but give me a consequence question that we've taught you how to ask and why do we ask it that way? Let's talk about that. Yeah. So, what if you don't do anything about this and you end up passing away many years bef before you, you expect to and you don't have the protection in place to, for your family to take care of everything? What, what do they do then? Yeah, see, so he's asking that in a concerned tone at the end. So, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll help you when you get into the inner show again. I'll, I'll reword that a little bit for you. We've tweaked that a little bit since you've been in where it's even more powerful. Mm -hmm. you, know, you already make a lot of money. We want you to make more. So what if you don't do anything about this and you end up passing away like years before you thought you would because none of us know the what, the day and the hour, right? Mm -hmm. How would Cindy end up paying for the house, the mortgage, and all those expenses without your income. See, and then I slow down into a concern tone. Why would I want to end the consequence question in a concern tone? They feel that you're concerned and it allows them to open up more and, and, and really internalize your concern and to be able to talk to you about what it would look like just facing, facing failure. For Why is that so important? Say it again. Why is that so important? Because they probably never thought about what it actually looked like if they never did it. So as they're telling you, they're telling themselves as well. Yep. Hold on. Okay, perfect. Everybody's message me, Jeremy, you're going over time. All right, we won't go through presentation stuff, but What's a, let's, let's, let's answer a few of their questions here before we jump off. Um, let's see here. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Jeremy. Prospect is going deep, finding roots that cause those effects symptoms to raise up. Do you agree that sales is prospecting skill set from the presentation becomes easy road towards the end? I'm not sure I understand your question, but it could be because I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed here. Let me see if I can. Get there here. I'm not because I'm not understanding what you're asking me there. I don't know what you're asking me. I, I apologize. Ask me that again, Facebook user. I don't see your name. Joe, I love tactics and strategies because they definitely help. But can't customers read past all that if you don't truly care about helping them and you're only trying to make a sale? 100 percent. Yeah, Joe, for sure. That's why you you want to learn how to use your tone. Because your tone is how they interpret the intention of why you're asking. So see that that consequence question I asked, Joe, I'm going to show you again here. So what if you don't do anything about this and, you, you know, you end up passing away like years before you thought you would, like 
30 some percent of Americans do, how would Cindy end up paying for the house, like the mortgage payment and all those expenses without your income? See, I lowered my tone into a what? A concerned tone. See, Joe, that communicates to him that I'm concerned when that happens, if they don't have the protection in place, because that would happen, right? If he didn't see, I'm concerned. So I'm using my tone to communicate that, which causes him to feel like I actually care because if I don't know how to use my tone there and I just ask it regularly like this. So what if you don't do anything about this, John, and you end up, Hey, do you end up passing my years before you thought you would like, how would, how would your wife end up paying for the house and all the expenses at that point? See, it's just kind of like blah. It's like just a regular tone. It doesn't communicate anything. But I want to end that into a concerned tone. Does that make sense? Okay. Hold on one second. Okay, Keith, any last words of advice for anybody on here listening in? Uh, get in the training. <laughs> and they don't have to get in the training. Why not just, you know, why not just push it down the road like a lot of unsuccessful salespeople would? Or they could do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't have to get in the training. You don't have to acquire advanced sales ability. I mean, you know, you can just keep pushing it down the road like a lot of sales unsuccessful salespeople would, right? Okay. So Keith, uh, thanks for being on. Well done. Anything you want to ask me real quick before I hop off? Uh, no, I appreciate you. I'm looking forward to, to jumping back in and, and going through everything. I appreciate all, all that. I'm looking forward to it because there's a lot more advanced training that you haven't been in since you graduated from the program eight, nine months ago, especially in the last six months, especially in your industry too, and a lot of other industries, advanced tonality. I didn't train a couple years ago that we're training a lot more. I, I really, you know, well, you already know. I mean, you went from 10 grand to 40 grand a month. So you you already know it works. But I believe minimum you'll probably get up to at least 60 grand a month in the, the next six months, probably 80 for sure. Okay. So good job, man. Congratulations. Now, are you married or on your own? On my own. Okay. Uh, okay. So do you got, are you dating anybody? Or are you just single? Yeah. Yeah. Dating. Yeah. Okay. So how does your, how does your girlfriend or whoever you're dating, how do they feel? Now, were they with you when you're making 10 grand a month? <laughs> no. Okay. So they only know you have 40 grand a month. All right. So they're okay with you going through training so you can make more? Yeah. Or they course. just want you to stay at 40 grand a month. It, it, it was the NEPQ framework that helped me uh close that close that. Oh, so you're closing the deal with your girlfriend. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, congratulations. I love that, man. Congratulations. That's awesome. All right, everybody. Thanks for being on. Now type in me if you want to acquire these same skills that Keith is acquiring. Type in me. Type in me in the comments. Waiting. I guess there's 111 people on here from YouTube and Facebook that don't want to make $40,000 a month. That's crazy. I love that. All right. Type in me if you want to acquire the sales ability necessary to make $40,000 a month in commissions like Keith in your industry, type in me. Ah, now they start coming. I see about 40, 50, 60 people. Okay. Now, for everybody who just typed in me, what's your next step to do that? Because it's all talk until you what? Actually acquire those skills. So do you want to just talk about it? Or do you actually want to acquire the skills so you do it? Okay, for those of you who don't want to just talk about it and dream about it, because we all know what's going to happen if you just dream about it. Nothing. For those of you who actually want to do it, just message me directly now. That's, that's all you got to do. So if you're in the Facebook group Sales Revolution, or if you're in the Facebook business page or my Facebook, or if you're on YouTube, just message me directly right now. Okay. Yeah, Mike, that's a good book. You're not going to be able to make 40 grand a month reading that book. I, I love my book. It's great. Okay. It's a really good book, but a book is a book. 
The way your brain works is you're going to retain about 4% of this book after you read it. 4%. And you're not going to understand how to sell in your industry reading this book because it's very generic, right? We train every industry, okay? It's a good book, though. Uh, but And you don't learn tonality because you're just reading questions. So you sound scripted. Yeah, that's the problem with just books. So, but it's a good book, but you're not going to make that type of money reading a book. I, I can, even though it's my book, you're still not going to do it. I'm just being real. So message me directly right now. Now, if you're on YouTube, you won't be able to message me on YouTube. So you'll have to join the Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro and just message me and say, Hey, Jeremy, I heard you on this Facebook live. How do I get these skills? Like, what do I need to do now? We don't have one product, one training program with one price. So if you ask me, what's your training program? What's the price? I can't tell you because we have like 37 different training programs and prices. Okay. Uh, so when you message me, either myself or somebody on my team will message you back in my account. They're going to ask a few questions about your situation. Like what's your industry? What do you feel like you're doing now? That's keeping you at the income you're at? Like what, what are you saying? What questions are you asking that you feel are triggering the prospect not to buy from you? And then they're going to ask you what you really want to make. And depending on those answers, they're going to book you with different account managers on our team that we have all over the world. Now, when you book with our account managers, they're going to ask you more questions because they're going to they're going to understand what your current sales ability is. You know, because if you're making three grand a month or five grand a month, we're going to put you in a different training program than somebody making 10 or 15 grand a month. OK, if you're making 10 or 15 or eight, we're going to put you in different training programs than somebody that makes three because you have to graduate in our programs. You can't start all the way at the top unless you're maybe already making 20 grand plus a month, then you can start at the top. OK, but more than likely, you'll start at some different training programs like Keith. You remember started MPQ 2.0, then you like doubled your income and then you were able to get into inner circle. That's where the, the big boys and girls play. But you got to go up different. There's levels to the ball game, and we want to make sure you're learning at the right speed. We don't want to overwhelm you. We're, we're only in business to get results. That's why we're one of the top 10 sales training companies in the world now, according to Selling Power Magazine. That's based on company revenue and client results. You can't buy that. Okay. Um, so just when you get on the account managers, be open and honest. Don't get your ego up that you know everything because we can't help you. So open up and tell us what's really going on and we can show you which programs are going to cause you to sell the most the quickest. All right. All right, everybody message me directly right now. I love you, Keith. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you, dude. I remember in inner circle. Once I saw your face, I was like, I remember that guy, you know, because we want to let 50 people a month into advanced inner circle and you have to graduate from 2.0 to 3.0 to get in there. So congratulations. I'm really proud of you, man. 40 grand. And I'll see you in two weeks when you rejoin for inner circle for another six months. Well Appreciate done. It. Appreciate you. Thanks, Keith. All right. Love you guys, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Keith. You're a stud. The myth, the man, the legend. See you soon.